Welcome back to the vlog. Today I'm doing a $300 buy-in at the 1-3 game. And the first hand I look down at is pocket queens. I mean the very first hand in the hijack. 300 in my stack. The middle position player bumps up to $10. Of course, I'm going to put in a 3-bet. The question's how much. I'm just getting a feel for the table. I can look around and tell this is kind of a tight table. So I throw in 35. Not too big. Not too small. The porridge is just right. The button makes the call. The middle position makes the call. We're going to the flop three ways. And it comes out a beauty. King, ace, jack, exactly what I didn't want to see. I double checked because I was sure there was a queen out there, but alas, there wasn't. So I check when it gets to me, and it checks through. The turn comes out the five of clubs. It checks through again. I'm just trying to get to the river, get to showdown. If we make it that far, I probably have the best hand. The river is a seven of clubs, three clubs on the board now. It checks all the way around. I flip up my queens, and sure enough, they're going to be good. Yep, I know what you're thinking. No, I had no idea that I had the nut flush. In game, I thought the ace was a spade. Wasn't thinking about it at all. I better get my eyes checked. Right off the bat, 368 in my stack, and the next hand I get is even more beautiful. Ace King suited, big slick, in middle position. The under the gun player who sat down with about $80 throws in a min raise, makes it six. I'm not gonna stand for it. I can tell with the table dynamics, I'm gonna start ruffling some feathers. The young guy sits down at the table, starts throwing chips around in the pot. I'm getting stares like, this isn't how you're supposed to play poker. Well, guess what? I've got the hand to back it up. The big blind calls. The under the gun player completes. We're going to the flop three ways. Jack, three jack, two jacks on the flop. That means it's less likely that someone has one. Catching me off guard. The under the gun player throws out 15, retaking control of the hand. Does he have a jack? Like something like jack 10. What would he min raise with pre flop? Maybe a pocket pair. Regardless, I have ace king suited. I'm not going anywhere just yet. I make the call. The big blind folds and we go to the turn. It's another jack. Now I'm pretty confident this guy's either got quads or he doesn't have a jack. And I might be in the lead. Regardless, he doesn't make my decision hard when he throws out three reds, $15 to go. And with my ace high king kicker, I'm going to make the call. When the river comes out, it's what I expected. It always comes either on the flop or the river. I say it's the ace of hearts. Exactly what I expected to come. Not really, but I'll tell you what. My hand has improved greatly, and I feel great about it. I feel even better when he takes his entire stack, $44, and ships it into the middle of the pot. I make the insta-call, and sure enough, he flips over king-10. He was bluffing. Diamond draw on the flop. Continued it all the way with the triple barrel. You gotta give him credit. I'm moving my chip stack straight out of Compton, and if I keep up this pace, I'm gonna be sitting, looking at Central Park from my billionaire's row apartment before you know it. And guess what? Hand number three is, baby. Ace, king of clubs in the cutoff. The undergun player calls. The middle position throws in three. Limp fest. Here we come. The low jack makes the call as well. And once again, I stick to my $25 bet. They all fold. I'm scooping some blinds and some limps. On to the next hand. Remember, I was in the cutoff for that one. This is the very next hand. And I pick up pocket queens again. I throw in 15. I size down. I don't want everyone to fold again. But I don't have to worry about that because the button grabs a stack of reds and raises me to 45. Action folds around. And now I'm faced with the decision. Do I want to call and lower my variance? Or do I just want to ship it all in? He does have position on me, but I also have to consider how many people are going to be 3-betting me in this game with anything worse than my hand. Not a lot. Maybe Pocket Jacks is in there, but everything else is just going to be a call. So at best, I'm up against Ace King, and it's a coin flip. Regardless, I thought about it too long. He has less than $200 in his stack. Let's just get to the point. Let's get to the river. I go all in. He throws in a chip. Insta-call. We go to the flop. Eight King Deuce. I hate seeing the King. The turn is the three of clubs. The river is the three of hearts, and sure enough, he flips over Ace King offsuit, crushing my chips like the hydraulic press in the Terminator, but there's no fate but what we make, and I'm about to make my money back. Just give me a little bit of time, baby. Give me some more great hands. I look down at Ace Jack of Spades, bump it up to 15. Once again, everyone folds. They're starting to catch on to the fact that I'm getting some monsters. The next hand I look down at, the very playable 7-6 suited under the gun. I'm in raised to 6. The low jack calls, the button calls, the small blind, and the big blind complete. 32 in the pot, 5-way action to the flop. And it's 10-9 jack, 2 spades on my way to the flush. I'm going to lead out for 20. Continuation bet, the small blind and the big blind make the call. The turn is the ace of spades. It's the gen card. I have a flush, but I have to be wary. It's not the biggest flush in the world. And the big blind decides to lead out into me. 55. Now I'm faced with the proposition. Do I raise? Do I just call? I still have a player behind me. I err on the side of caution. I make the call, and we go to the river, and it's the nine of spades, and I'm glad I was cautious. The board pairs and a four spade comes out. The odds just went up that I'm beat, and so when my opponent checks to me, slows down. I don't think much about it. I check back. I played it safe for two streets, and it looks like I could have made a little bit more money because he flips over five three of spades. He hit his flush too. Oh, I'm not sure how much I could have dragged him along for, but definitely could have made a few extra dollars on that one. 418 on my stack, and the next thing I pick up is another playable suited connector, Queen Jack of Hearts. I am just flush with beautiful cards today, but beautiful cards don't always translate to a beautiful stack. 
The middle position player limps. The button juices it up to seven. I'm gonna make it a little bigger than that. I go 23. The button comes along, $50 in the pot, heads up action, and it's 10, queen, eight, hit top pair, decent kicker, gut shot possibilities. And so I'm gonna continuation bet. Again, $20 I make it. The button makes the call. And the turn is a seven of diamonds. I look over to my opponent and I notice when that seven hit, he started breathing heavily. That's a sign, that's a huge tell that there's an adrenaline dump going on. Their hand probably just improved in a way they didn't expect it. I check it over to him. And he immediately goes to start stacking out chips, drops 35 into the middle of the pot. And this is where my spidey senses are tingling. I'm really wanting to find a fold. I have every reason to. I do have top pair, but it's basically worth nothing at this point. But I get dragged into the pot. As you can see, I'm thinking, I'm pulling out my chips. I'm just begging myself to fold, but we've all been there. We all know the feeling. You wanna see the cards. You wanna make sure that you were validated with your decision. And if you fold, you're never gonna see them. So I do something I regret immediately. I make the call and we go to the river. It's the ace of diamonds, four diamonds, an ace on the board. I'm in big trouble. I check to my opponent. Luckily he checks back, but unluckily he did hit that seven, queen seven. I almost got away from it. And those plays are the divider between average and great. If I can just pull those off even 20% more often, I'll be saving a lot of money in the long run. The next hand I pick up are pocket tens in the small blind, 333 in my stack. There's a straddle on the pot. The low jack calls, the cutoff calls. And I'm going to go big. There's already a decent amount of money. I don't want to get a bunch of callers. Actually, I don't even want to see the flop. So I make it 50. And I get one caller in the big blind. The player to my left hasn't been too active. He only has $100 behind. So I'm not sure what he has. Maybe a hand like pocket sevens. Maybe a hand like ace jack, ace queen suited. The flop comes out nine, deuce three, all below a 10, and I am not gonna waste any time getting myself into trouble. I just push him all in, 103, and he quickly tosses his hand in the muck. Ladies and gentlemen, I need your help. I've been informed that my last video wasn't recommended at all. We've gotta smack that algorithm upside the head and do it together. If you could do me a favor and drop a like, it would mean the world. Let's get to the next hand. Pocket jacks in the big blind, 397 in my stack. The poker gods are filling my basket to the brim. I'm feasting on fun hands. The middle position player makes the call. The other middle position player bumps it up to 16. Haven't seen him play many hands at all. The hijack makes the call. But of course, I'm not just going to throw a few chips in the pot. I'm going to throw a stack of chips in the pot. I make it 55. And both the middle position player and the hijack come along. 195 already in this pot. And the flop comes out again just below the jacks. 3, 10, 6. I have to decide, do I want to protect my hands, take the $200 in the pot, or do I want to try to sucker him in, which is risky. There's draws possible. I decided to just go for it. I put $200 in the middle of the pot, and $200 is going to be good. 534 in my stack, and I pick up ace-king once again, this time in the hijack. Folds to me. I bet 15, and I take down the blinds. I feel like I'm forgetting something, and then I remember I have to pull out my badass card protector. Found at the bottom of the ocean, true pirate treasure. If you want one, link in the description below. I set it on my card, the dealer pitches me another one, and I take a peek, pocket aces. I'm not saying there's a connection, but you never know. Action folds to me, I make it 15, and the only player that wants to come along is seat two, OMC, Pickle Rick, I mean Slick Rick, just look and see what he does on the flop. The flop comes out 5-3 deuce, and he goes to grab chips and then checks. What a move, what a move. You know what, he does it every single time. The only thing more consistent than his antics is how tight he plays, so I'm just gonna try to barely string along with a $10 bet, and $10 is good enough for him to call. The turn comes a three of spades, and oh, he just can't help it. You saw that little flinch, but it looks like he's given up the hand, because he checks, I bet 25, and he quickly throws his hand into the muck. I can't express to you how quickly these hands were coming, basically back to back to back. I throw away just a few more hands, 563 on my stack, and I pick up ace-10 offsuit, and what do you know, C2 has woken up, he's straddled. Folds to me, I make it 15. He wants to come at me once again. He makes the call. 34 in the pot, we're headed to the flop. 7, 4, 10, top pair, best kicker, and look what he does. He makes his little move. That must be like an old school technique, because I know a few guys who do it. I'm sure you guys do too. I don't know where it came from, and I don't know why it drives me so crazy, but it just does. I bet 20, and he makes the fold. The next hand I pick up is ace of spades, four of spades in the hijack. This could get juicy. The low jack bumps it up, opens the action to 20. That's a that's a pretty big bet for the table and a pretty big bet for him. Once again, my spidey senses tell me, you know, just step away from this. 10, 12, that's okay. 20 is too much, but I make the call and the flop comes out three, deuce three. 
He continuation bets makes it 55. This is another opportunity to get away from the hand, but the equity is all I see, and I get a little greedy. I've already decided I'm committed to this pot, and so I make the call. I guess hoping that my opponent has ace-king, ace-queen. The turn comes to six of clubs, and he checks to me. My plan is working. The question is, what am I going to bet? I just decided to go for the milkiest of bets. I match his bet, 55. He thinks about it for a quick moment and makes the call. The river is the nine of spades. Now I have a flush draw. Doesn't matter. No more cards coming. He checks to me. And I decide I'm going to go for it. I'm trying to build a sand castle out of one grain of sand. If I really want to make him think, I should pull a Doug Polk and just shove an over bet. But I kind of chicken out at the last second and I go 150 and he instantly calls. I flip over my hand knowing I'm dead and he flips over pocket queens. And what am I doing bluffing on a board like that? Of course, he's going to go into check call mode with any big pocket pairs. And he just swept the rug right out from under me. 260 in my stack. And I go on a dry spell. I, I sit there and I think and simmer over that dumb dumb bluff and i said to myself you know what you're cut off for the day in for 300 out for 262 for a loss of 38 dollars thank you so much for watching kato out